Hallelujah. Does anybody know that I am is able this morning? That whatever you need, all you have to do is ask. Is there anybody out there who knows that I am will fight your battles for you in 2024? Hallelujah. We give him honor. We give him glory. We give him praise. Hallelujah. For the great I am. Thank you, Lord. You know what? Can we can we keep that going right now? We've communed with the Lord. We've communed with one another. We've we we've worshiped. God has gotten our hearts and our minds ready for his word, but can we pause for just another moment? Can you put something in the chat that gives God glory, that gives him praise? Maybe it's a hallelujah. Maybe it's a thank you, Jesus. Whatever the case is, can you give him glory right now at least just one more time for bringing you through to another year? Who gonna help me praise God this morning? And say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It may not be easy, but I still give you glory. Times weren't always fun, but I still give you glory. Thank you, God, for being there for me. Thank you, God, for all those prayers that you answered in 2023. Thank you, God, for protecting and keeping my loved ones who I was concerned about and bringing us into another year. Thank you, Lord. Worthy. Worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Your praise is making God smile. He feels it. Amen. And I feel his spirit moving as we go to him for a word this morning. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you today, Lord, for being a good God, for keeping us, for watching over us, God, for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. And not only that, but we give you glory just for who you are. Open our hearts and our minds to hear a word from you today. Strengthen our faith. Help us to trust that whatever it is that may be troubling us is nothing to you. You got us and you got it all covered. Minimize Lance, maximize Christ for his glory. In Jesus name, amen. If you're still listening, type in amen. If you're ready, to hear a word from the Lord, type in, amen. So I think about our technologically savvy culture. I think about all the ways that we have of communicating with one another. Uh, we have things like cell phones where we can call somebody from anywhere on the globe and be able to talk to them wherever they are at on the globe. We even have things like a Zoom meeting that we're in where wherever we're at, not only can we see somebody, but we can also talk to them. Uh, I, I think about how we can listen to the radio and hear somebody across the seas. I remember growing up and, and my dad had, I believe it was called the CB, Sister Ray, where it's like little radio in the car and he could press a button and he, you know, the truckers would be, he, he could hear the truckers comment to one another over the little CB device. Anybody out there know what I'm talking about? 
I, I say all that to say one thing that seems consistent, Sister Birdie, is that no matter what method we are trying to communicate or trying to use to communicate to one another, there is often an element of us not being sure if we heard what they said clearly. Am I making sense to anybody this morning? You may call in and they're saying, turn your radio down, turn your radio down. There's too much static for us to be able to hear you. We think about the commercials with, with our cell phones and we'll hear the phrase, can you hear me now? Come on, I know I have a few witnesses out there that know what I'm talking about. Somebody's talking and we won't be able to hear We'll ask them to say it again. Sometimes in, in my professional voice, when, when, when I'm amongst somebody and they, they say something and I don't hear them, I'll say, I'm sorry? Come on. Come on, I can't get no help today. Sometimes we'll say, could you repeat that? please. Or frankly and simply will say, huh? <laughs> or like Gary Coleman used to say, what you talking about, Willis? All of these things that we say when we doubt that we are hearing somebody clearly. Am I making sense to anybody yet this morning? But what about what about when we are seeking God's voice and we are not sure if we are hearing him clearly? Ooh, what about that? I hope I have somebody's attention now. Let me ask that again. What about when we are seeking God's voice and we're not sure if we are hearing him clearly? What if like our dear brother Gideon in our text today we're hearing him, but still struggling a little with doubt in terms of what we heard him say. This morning, I want to begin what is going to at least be a two-part series where I want to preach from the subject, can you hear me now? In fact, if you're still listening, I want you to Type that into the chat. Can you hear me now? And for this morning, I wanna talk about three things we can do when our faith is lacking. Amen, I see you, Sister Sarah. Three things we can do when our faith is lacking. I, I hope somebody is glued to their seat. I know that this is important to me. When, when my faith is lacking, I, I want to know what's gonna help me. Come on, somebody. What's gonna help me hear the voice of God and trust the voice of God. Judges chapter six. Verse 36 to 34, that's our primary text today. Judges chapter six, 36 to, to 40, excuse me, 36 to 40. And it reads, Gideon said to God, if you will save Israel by my hand, as you have promised. Look, I will place a wool fleece on the threshing floor. If there is dew only on the fleece and all the ground is dry, then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you said. Verse 38, and that is what happened. Gideon rose early the next day. He squeezed the fleece and wrung out a dew, and wrung out the dew, a bowl full of water. 
verse 39. Now, here's somebody laughing out there at our good friend Gideon. Don't you be laughing at him for what happens in verse 39, because you know you do the same thing. This is what it says. Then Gideon said to God, do not be angry with me. Let me make just one more request. Allow me more, one more test with the fleece. But this time make the fleece dry and let the ground be covered with dew. That night, God did so. Only the fleece was dry, all the ground was covered with dew. May God add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his Holy word. What is going on here? God has told Gideon that he will defeat the Midianites, this, this bully of a people that is terrorizing uh, the children of Israel. And so that often happened during the time of the judges. The, the people would turn to God, God would deliver them. Then they go back to their old ways and uh, a, a foreign adversary would come in and begin to oppress them. And then they turn to God. He'd raise up another leader. That's where we get the term judge, a charismatic, a charismatic leader that would then lead the people in the Lord and they would triumph over their enemies. And so that is what's going on here. The Midianites have been oppressing the people. God is saying, you, Gideon, you are a mighty man of valor. You are a warrior. You are who I am going to use. Your leadership is going to deliver my people from these mean, wicked, and pesky Midianites. Are you all following me uh, this morning? And so Gideon has heard the voice of God, uh, but he's struggling to believe it. Okay, he, he wants to make sure that he's heard God clearly. And, and that is what's going on here with this whole fleece thing that we just read. So point number one, let's go ahead and get into the text. Point number one is this. Three things I can do when my faith is lacking. Point number one is this. Look for the bowl full of evidence. Hallelujah. If you're listening for God's voice, his purpose, and his provision in your life, look at what you have a bowl full of. Brother Patterson, I, I like a bowl full of a good thing. Uh, a, a bowl full of, for me, butter pecan ice cream. That's great. At least to my taste buds it is. I don't know so much for my gut, but at least. For my taste buds, it's a great thing. Amen, Sister Ray. I like a good bowl full of gumbo. Same thing applies. Bowl full of clam chowder, bowl full of chili, beef stew. All these things, these good things that I like a bowl, a bowl full of. Brothers and sisters, in this text, Gideon gets a bowl full of exactly what he asked for. I don't know if you noticed that. So not a glass half full or a glass half empty, but God makes it completely clear here to Gideon by giving him a bowl full. Let's go back to the text. Judges 6.38, it's in there. It says this, and that is what happened. Gideon rose early the next day. He squeezed the fleece and wrung out the dew. What was it? a bowl full of water. Remember, this is what Gideon asked God to do. Some of us overlook the fact that in our past, we've asked God to do things and he's delivered. And, and many times he's delivered a bowl full of whatever it is that we asked him for. And yet, this, this future task that we have, this, this future challenge, this future adversary that we're up against we are acting as if god didn't just provide and make a way the last time we went to him about something that he called us to do am i making sense to anybody this morning i had to ask myself what do i have a bowl full of 
I have a bowl full of love in my household. Oh my gosh. I'm so grateful for my wife and my kids. They care about me. They, they love me. I prayed to God to have a family that, that, that was consistent with love. And he delivered. So, so it's like, you know, it's this, it's this transmission that, that's coming in. God to Lance. God to Lance. Remember that family that you prayed for? You got a bowl full. Can you hear me now? Do you see that I'm listening to you now? Do you trust me for what I'm calling you to do now? I hope I'm making sense to somebody this morning. What about you? What is God giving you a bowl full of that if you gave it the merit that it deserves, you wouldn't be so pessimistic and doubtful all the time about what's next? Who am I helping? And if you're upset that it's not a bowl full of money, then your priorities aren't straight with God. Can I get a witness? This isn't a prosperity uh, uh, gospel that I'm preaching out there, but I'm talking about a God in whom the wealth that's most important is the spiritual wealth that he's given us, our inheritance in Christ. So what old boy gets on your nerves? He's been with you all those years. God is saying, you hear me? Can you hear me now? That job you got that pays the bills and helps you keep your kids insurance. God is saying, can you hear me now? That child or niece or nephew you disappointed with. Weren't you like Gideon at one time praying for them when God brought them into your life? Meanwhile, you wondering if God was moving. Am I helping somebody today? Can you hear him now? Sister Birdie going to give me help. That's going to be enough. I can't get no help from nobody but Sister Birdie this morning. Come on, who out there knows God has kept you through some things, but you're going to sit up here and be worried about what's coming next. It's human. But remember, we're, we're, we're called to live in the spiritual. We're called to walk by faith and not by sight. Brother Jim, I, I think about John the Baptist when, when he was beginning to doubt and, and he, he, he sent out a message to Jesus. He, he says, are you the one or are we to wait for someone else? I'm encouraged by Jesus's response that comes in Matthew chapter 11. Let's put it on the screen. This is what it says. After Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on there. He went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? That this John the Baptist, this one preparing the way for Christ, this powerful preacher for God is having a moment where he's wondering if Jesus is the one, watch Jesus' response. He says, go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. He says, John, how about this bowl full of evidence? Where's God giving you a bowl full of evidence this morning, saints? Remember, God didn't say that the weapon wouldn't be formed. He said that it wouldn't prosper. Do you believe that this morning? What are you afraid of going into 2024 that you can let go and give it to God? That takes us into point number two, because that's, that's what's happening here. Again, Gideon, he's fearful 
of these Midianites. And here God is telling him he's going to be the leader. He, he the, the angel goes to, to goes to Gideon and he calls him a mighty warrior. And Gideon is looking around like, I know me, you ain't talking to me. <laughs> me, a mighty warrior? So Gideon's worried. He, he's, he's afraid. He's concerned about some things. He hasn't learned to stand up to the Midianites yet. In fact, uh, if we go back to verse 11, you'll see that he is hiding from them in the wine press even. And so, brothers and sisters, there's a correlation, watch this, between his fear and the fact that he doesn't fully believe what God has said yet. I'm going to say that again. There's a correlation between Gideon's fear and the fact that he doesn't fully believe what God has said about him in this situation yet. What do you mean? Well, let's go to point number two. Because I don't know about y'all, but this happens to me a lot. Point number two is this. I find moments where when it's a faith thing and, and, and God gets me back on track, I find myself saying or thinking this, it's, oh yeah, God, you did say that, didn't you? <laughs> Can I get a witness out there? You ever had those moments? Oh yeah, that's right, God, yeah, you you, you did say that. Your, your word does say that. Yeah, you did send such and such my way this week and they reminded me of that. Oh yes, that's right. I, like when Peter was walking on the water I took my eyes off of Jesus and I began to look at the storm and I forgot what God said about the situation. I forgot that God told me that I was a mighty warrior. I forgot that God told me I was more than a conqueror and I'm operating in this fear instead of the faith that God wanted me to have just so I could make it through this situation. Oh yeah, God, you did say that, didn't you? What you mean, Pastor? Again, you forget something that somebody said. You forget what God said. He reminds you. And then they even may remind you like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, God did say that. Let's go back to the text. Judges 6. Verse 15 to 16. This is the Lord talking to Gideon. And then Gideon's response. He says, Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. I don't know if y'all noticed, but there is already something wrong with Gideon's language here. Do you see how much he's using the word I? I just wanted to point that out. Now let's, let's go to verse 16 which says this, because God corrects him he, he, here. He says, the Lord answered, I will be with you and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alone. So brothers and sisters, it, it, if you think that you are going into whatever this battle is alone, that you are going to have to do whatever this is in your own power, then you better be afraid Shoot, you, you ought to be scared if you're thinking you, you can do it. Uh, you're wondering whether you can do it all by yourself. You, you should be afraid. But the Lord gives Gideon a great reminder here. He says, Gideon, you're not doing this alone. Who will encourage their neighbor in the chat right now by saying whatever it is you are going through, remember, you are not in this alone. God is with you. Because guess what? Oh, yeah. God did say that, didn't he? He did say that he would never leave nor forsake me. He did say, as Sister Birdie reminded us, that the righteous have never been forsaken, nor their seed begging for bread. Yeah, yeah, God did say that, didn't he? You're not going in this alone, Brother Gideon. 
Sister Birdie, you're not in this alone. Sister Carolyn, you're not in this alone. Brother Patterson, Brother McBride, you, you're not in this alone. Sister Sarah, you're not in this alone. Sister Sherry, you're not in this alone. Whoever is watching this, you are not in this alone. God is with you. Let's go to verse 36. Excuse me, verse 16, verse 36. No, we said that right. So verse 15 and 16, we, said, we heard God tell Gideon what would happen. He said, I will be with you and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. Again, watch this language uh, from Gideon here. Gideon said to God, if you will save Israel by my hand, as you have promised. I read that and I was like, wow, why is Gideon saying if when in verse 16, God already told him. I'm sorry, y'all don't, I guess nobody gets it today. huh? I'm just a little confused. What? Why is Gideon saying if, if in verse 16, God already told him. Okay, can you hear me now? God is asking somebody, can you, can you, can you hear me now? I, I've already told you what I'm going to do for you. You've heard it in my heart. I reminded you in your prayers. I sent somebody to you that, that reminded you that everything is going to be all right. Can, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Testing. Testing. Transmission. Transmission. Has it been lost? Or can you hear me now? Brothers and sisters, we're talking about being people of faith. And if I'm saying, well, this is okay if God's word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Well, well this is okay if I'm more than a conqueror in Christ. Well, this is okay if God really so loved the world. No, if God says it, come on. Believe it, saints, trust. That's the whole point of the bowl full of evidence. It's to strengthen your faith when you're wondering whether he can do it again. Amen, Sister Mosley, it's settled. So when God is saying, do you hear me now? It, it, it Sometimes it's not always that it's fuzzy. Sometimes we completely hear what he's saying, but we just doubt him. We don't believe, we don't trust, or, or we don't like it. It may not be that it's fuzzy. It may be clear, but we're struggling to accept it for whatever the case may be. And listen, we're not bashing Brother Gideon this morning, are we? God already proclaimed him to be a mighty warrior in verse 12. God has proclaimed something great about you too. This battle of faith that you're going through is what God wants to use to increase your faith, just like he ended up doing with Gideon. How about a few scriptures so, so I can remind you of what God has said? Can we do that for a moment? Let's see if we can get some, oh yeah, God did say that in the chat. Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Not by myself, but through him who gives me strength. Verse 19, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Oh, yeah, God did say these things, right? Verse 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. What are you afraid of this morning? God did say this. Do you remember? 
that whatever it is, he's working it out for your good. Can you hear him now? First Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. You can throw whatever it is that you're concerned about at the feet of God because he cares for you. Again, God did say these things in his word. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Gideon needed this reminder, didn't he? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. We're going to get into this a little bit next week. Gideon had too many men and he was confused that God was dropping the amount of men that he had because in his mind, it was all about the numbers. And that's how we get caught up in things. We're, we're leaning on our own understanding instead of just trusting the Lord. Am I making sense to somebody this morning? Isaiah 26, 3. He says, you will keep peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Oh, yeah, God, you did say this. Yeah, you did say that if I kept my mind on you, that I would have peace. So when I don't have peace, is it because God is not giving me peace or is it because I haven't placed my mind on him? Definitely a question I ought to be asking because God, yeah, that's right. You did say this. Oh, yeah. Matthew 6, 25 to 34. This is a long one. But I know somebody needs this reminder this morning. He says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air that do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Why do I feel like I got to repeat verse 27? Can any one of you by worrying, add a single hour to your life. God is saying, can you hear me now? Am I clear? Verse 28, and why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Verse 31, so do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. Whatever you are in need of right now, God knows, brothers and sisters. Verse 33, this is what we need to do though. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. After reading all that, I hear God saying, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I know your faith is slipping, but can you hear me now? Anybody out there who's saying, oh yeah, God, I hear you now. Take a moment, brothers and sisters. Think about what you are afraid of in 2024. Give it to God and listen to what he's saying to you through the scriptures. Will you do that for a moment? Just pause. I'm serious. Take a moment. Think about whatever you are afraid about right now in 2024. Give it to God and listen to what he's saying to you through the scriptures through your loved ones, through your prayers, and maybe even through something that's been said this morning. Just take a moment. Can you hear him now? Thank you, Lord. We, we lay all of our burdens at your feet. 
knowing that you are an able and a willing God to meet us at our point of need. Whatever it is, God, we trust that you already have it. Thank you for the bowl full of evidence you've given us in the past that helps our faith, even during times when we're facing adversity. Point number three. Point number three is this, testing, testing. Testing, testing. That should sound familiar, right? Testing, testing. When we're using a microphone, you'll often hear somebody say that. Testing, testing. Is it just me? But typically when folk are doing a mic check, they do it more than once. Amen, Sister Ray? It's rarely, it's rarely just one testing. It's usually another two or three after that. Testing, testing, testing. We know they are saying it twice because we heard him say it the first time, but they say it again anyway, just to make sure. I'm gonna say that again. We hear them say testing the first time, but then they repeat it. They say it again, just to make sure that we hear them. Oh God. <laughs> I heard you, but how about another test? That's what I see going on with Gideon here. The first time wasn't enough for Gideon, so he asked God again, although a little different. Testing, testing, testing. Verse 39, let's look. It says this, get, then Gideon said to God, do not be angry with me. Let me make just one more request. Watch this. Allow me one more test with the fleece. But this time make the fleece dry and let the ground be covered with dew. Verse 40 says that night God did so. Only the fleece was dry. All the ground was covered with dew. Now, Pastor Wiggins, I, I wrestle with this text across the years because part of me is like Gideon, and I, I put myself in Gideon's shoes, and I'm like, Gideon, why wasn't that enough for you to leave it alone? You put that test out there. It was something that only God could do in terms of the do. Amen. And God did it. And that wasn't enough for you, Gideon. Anybody out there understand what I'm saying? Like, like when I put when I'm like, Gideon, why wasn't that enough? I'm putting myself in his shoes. Although I know that I can relate to Gideon in the sense that I, I, I've been in his shoes where God has provided a sign and I'm still wondering if I'm hearing him clearly. But it's the idea that, okay, like, like get in, put your burdens down, then walk away trusting that God has it. That's faith. But there's another part of me, Sister Birdie, that, that's like, Gideon had the boldness to ask God to be God again. Is there anybody listening today or whenever you may be watching? You may say, Brother Lance, my faith is a little weak this morning, but I'm bold enough to ask God to be God at least one more time. The author of Hebrews says the fact that you went to God to begin with already implies that you had some faith. God may be saying, can you hear me now? Yes, Lord, I hear you. But yes, Lord, I'm also struggling. But at the same time, I, I, I trust that you can make it clear to me at least one more time. God, I admit my faith is a little weak in this area, but I got enough faith to say, God, I saw how you showed yourself by blessing 
one of my kids. Now I'm asking if you're you to bless the other ones. I'm going to put this fleece out here at least one more time. I know my faith is a little weak, but I wouldn't even bother you, God, if I didn't think you could do it. So, God, let me just ask one more time. God, you blessed me through one operation, through one procedure, through one health scare. God, I'm asking you to be God and to bring me through another one at least one more time. God, I know that the last job or the last relationship didn't work. My faith is a little weak, but God, I have enough faith to ask you to be God at least one more time. Bless me one more time in this type of way. Testing, 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 testing. Oh, thank you, Lord. God, my faith may be a little weary. Point number one says, you've supplied a bowl full of evidence. God, help my eyes to be see, able to see clearer all the bowlfuls of evidence that you have provided for me across the years. Point number two, my faith may be a little weary, but God, I hear you saying, look to my words to you. What have I said to you about yourself? I've said that you're more than a conqueror. I, I said that I would never leave you nor forsake you. I've said that once you're in Jesus's hands, nobody can snatch you out. Oh God, help me to be able to remember and say, yeah, you did say that. Point number three, my faith may be a little bit weary, but God, I hear you saying, test me in this. Come back to me again. Keep talking to me. Keep putting that fleece out. Keep asking me to be God one more time, and I'll continue to prove to you that I am. Have I not delivered you through all the times up to now? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus Christ died for your sins. The fact that God sent his son and the fact that the son, Jesus Christ, followed through with it because of his love for you, that ought to prove that he's worthy of your faith this morning. The fact that God raised him from the dead ought to prove that he is able to meet you at your point of need that you should have no worry when you're in Jesus's hands. There's an extra comfort for believers during times of doubt because we know we can lay it at the feet of Christ. And that if we have to put that fleece out one more time, God is able, God is able to give us a bowl full one more time. Glory to God. Not only is he worthy, but any God who could raise and be raised from the dead is an able God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We want to hear from you here at Compassionate Church. If you've made a decision for Jesus to be Lord of your life, we'd like, we'd like to hear from you about that. If you have questions about the faith, about being a disciple of Jesus Christ. We'd love to talk to you about that as well. Or maybe you are a believer and this message encouraged you, encouraged you in your faith, reminded you of the bowl full of evidence, reminded you of the things God has told you about you, reminded you that you can put that fleece out there again. We want to hear from you how you're going to trust God more in 2024 than you did 2023. I'm so serious. Reach out to us on Facebook, on YouTube. Let us know how we can be a support to you or let us know how we can praise God for how he's moved in your life. Come on, Sister Ray. Thank you, Pastor Lance, for a powerful message. 
entitled Can You Hear Me Now? Uh, may it be with us throughout the week and nourishing to our minds and bodies as well as those we may come across and share the message with. All right, I have announcements. Please continue to join us Thursday night for Bible study and prayer meeting via Zoom at 37, uh, <laughs> 7.30 p.m. Also join us Sunday live stream service via Zoom at 10.45 a.m. To connect with CCM, you can text or chat or message us on Messenger um, or send us an email at CompassionateChurchMinistries at gmail.com. Uh, this week's Mindful Mondays at CCM um, uh, devotion is a seven-day devotion starting tomorrow in um, U Version Bible app. Holy noticing how a Christian can practice mindfulness. Um, again, I believe I've invited most of the church family to this particular devotion. If you do not have the link and you'd like to participate, just let First Lady Ray know, and I'll send you the link. Please continue to look for Pastor Lance's advertisement um, in the Herald. It's still running a couple more weeks. There's, um, it's also listed here on the PowerPoint. Um, for anyone that is interested in receiving or in need of receiving pastoral, individual, marriage, and family counseling, um, Pastor Lance, Reverend Dr. Lance Smith, is um, a good resource for such services. If, services, if he cannot um, provide it for you, he can get you a referral. Um, pass the word around church family about the availability for um, pastoral counseling here at CCM. Now we have our benediction. If you will unmute so we can read it together. Is the Lord my prayer our prayer is that God has reached out and touched you this morning that you were blessed by something that was prayed something that was sang something that was read something that was preached and our prayer is that you would continue to hide God's word in your heart so that there were those times when your faith is weary you can trust that God has you in his hands. Our benediction comes from Romans chapter 15, verse 13. If you're in the Zoom meeting, we're going to ask that you unmute and we can read it all together. All right, saints, verse 13 says, may the God, may the God of hope, may the God of fill, hope you with all fill you joy with all and joy peace and as you trust peace. in him, if you trust so, in so that you him. may overflow so that you with may hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. God bless you and keep you, saints. Amen. Yeah.